the statement of Jeff Atwood, which is often referred to as Atwood Law. Any application that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. Well, the code is now more than a decade old and it is turning out to be quite right in the current technological scenario. These days, JS is used for automating simple tasks for building complex software applications. Well, a very warm hello and welcome back. In today's lecture, we will move forward in browser object model concept and see the next use of window object, which will be window screen. But before that, let us quickly see the agenda. Now you would be wondering about this window screen object, I bet. So what exactly is a window screen object? The window screen object contains information about the user's screen, such as resolution, that is the width and the height of the screen, the color, depth, pixel depth, and a lot more. Since the window object is at the top of the scope chain, properties of the window screen object can be accessed without specifying the window prefix. For example, window.screen.width, it can be written as screen.width. The following section will show you how to get information about the user's display using the screen object property of the window object. Since we can get all the information about user's browser, we can start with the width and height. Now, let us jump into the code. In this example, we are getting the screen's width and height with the help of screen.width and screen.height, which we are using in the getResolution function. And we assign the function to the onClick event of the button. Let us see the output on the browser when we click the Get Resolution button. We are alerted with the width and height of the screen. Next, we will see how to get the available height and width of the screen. The screen.avail width and screen.avail height property can be used to get the width and height available to the browser for its use on the user's screen in pixels. The screen's available width and height is equal to the screen's actual width and height minus the width and height of the interface features like the taskbar in Windows. And here is an example. In this example, there is a function called getAvailSize, which returns the available width and height of the screen. And that function is assigned to the onClick event of the getAvailableSize button. Let us see the output on the browser. After clicking on the button, we are getting the available height and width alerted on the screen. Now, let us move to an interesting part, which is getting screen color depth. So you can use the screen.colorDepth property to get the color depth of the user's screen. Now, color depth is the number of bits used to represent the color of a single pixel. Color depth indicates how many colors as a device screen is capable of producing. For example, a screen with color depth of 8 can produce 256 colors. 28. Currently, most devices have screens with color depth of 24 or 32. In simple words, more bits produce more color variations, like 24 bits can produce 224 equal to 16777. 216 color variations or true colors, whereas 32 bits can produce 232, which is equal to 4294, 967, 296 color variations or deep colors. Let us see how we can get the color depth of the screen. In this example, we are getting the color depth of the screen with the help of screen.colorDepth, which we have used in the function getColorDepth. Now, let us see the output on the browser. After clicking the button, we get alerted by the color depth of our screen, which is 24. Next, we are going to see the screen pixel depth. Getting screen pixel depth. You can get the pixel depth of the screen using the screen.pixeldepth property. Pixel depth is the number of bits used per pixel by the system display hardware. For modern devices, color depth and pixel depth are equal. And here is an example. In this example, we are getting the pixel depth of our screen by defining a function get 
pixel depth. And in that function, we are applying the screen dot pixel depth, which will help us to get the pixel depth. So let us see the output on the browser. Click on the button. Great, the pixel depth of our screen is 24. As you all know, we are learning the window object. And in today's lecture, we are going to learn about the window dot location. So without wasting any more time, let us get started. But before that, let us see the agenda of this video. We are going to see what window dot location is and properties of it with examples. The window dot location object can be used to get the current page address, URL and to redirect the browser to a new page. Now we can get a lot of information about the current page. So let us get started. First is window.location.href. The window.location.href property returns the URL of the current page. Let us directly jump into the coding part. In this example, we are getting the URL of the current page with the help of window.location.href. Now let us see the output. Since we are executing the program locally, it gives us the path where the file has been saved. Let us move forward to the next property. The window.location.pathName property returns the path name of the current page. And here is the code. Well, as the name of the property suggests, in this example, we are getting the path name of the current page. Now let us see the output. You can see the path name of our page. Next is window location port. The window.location.port property returns the number of the internet host port of the current page. Let us jump into the coding part. Here it is on your screen. So in this particular example, we are getting the port of the current page with the help of window location port. Let us see the output. If the port number is default, 80 for HTTP and 443 for HTTPS. Most browsers will display zero or absolutely nothing. Now let us move forward and see our last property. Window location assign. The window.location.assign method loads a new document. And here is the example on your screen. In this example, we are loading Data is good page with the help of window.location.assign. We have given the link to the method. Now let us see the output on the browser. When we click on the button, then the page loads and redirects us into the next page. So these are the window location methods. I hope that you guys thoroughly enjoyed learning all of them. Well, try them yourself and we will meet in the next lecture with the next window concept. Till then, please keep practicing and stay safe. Bye.